Yes, what's going on, people? You're listening to the Mo Gilligan podcast. Um, today's guest, I'm really happy to have you on my pod, Harry. Do you know yes. why? Yeah, because I really feel like you've really like rejuvenated yourself mm-hmm. in a way. Like your your energy, your aura. You just seem not that I I I I, I didn't know you before mm-hmm. like that to know what your energy was like. But you can see when someone energy when they feel re, you know re, rejuvenated. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? I think that's the word I'm looking for. But it's just so sick how you've carved out a lane for yourself at a time where it's very easy to just keep doing the same thing. Do you see know what I'm saying? So what you've done, you know, with Chunks in Philly and you're doing stuff on YouTube and it's really it's really nice to see. And I think especially for young people, it's it's really good when you see everyone like winning, but you see this person who's like, oh, I've seen you do that. And I've seen you do that. And I've seen you do that. And I'm doing this. Also at a time where I met you when... It's so weird because I heard you on a on a on a um, podcast mm. recently, and you was talking about you know how you was down when you was like really broke and stuff like that, mm. um, which you know a lot of guys have been in that place. Mm. You know, I'll be honest, I've been in that place when you're trying to borrow money from Wonga and that. And you know, you're not paying it back, bro. You're sitting there just like <laughs> well, it's June the eleventh, yeah. Wait, just wait to that eleventh day, man. <laughs> but um. No, I think it's like, it, it's really sick to see how you've carved out a lane for yourself. But also at the same time, you've like, you stay consistent with it, with what your brand is. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? And you're a smart guy as well. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's what's sick when I, when I meet people and they are creatives and you talk to them off the cameras and you're like, bro, like, you got your head screwed on, man. You really know what you're doing. So welcome to the, to the Mo Gilligan podcast. Jeez, what an intro. Um, I'll be honest with you. That's the intro that's ever happened to me in my life. No, do you know what it is? This podcast is really about giving people their flowers. Yeah. And really like, you know, we live in a time where it's, you can just see this and scroll and like and stuff, but it's really important to give people their flowers when it's time to give them their flowers, not yeah. on a thread on, on Twitter when it's, yeah. when, when it dies down a bit. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I think, and, and at times where in people's career where it's like, we don't. We can't just give people their flowers when oh it's, it's ended now. Or mm. do you remember my man from back in the day? It's mm. like give them their flowers right now. One hundred percent. Like while they're at the top, give them give them their flowers, man. So um, how are you first of all, bruv? How are you, man? It's mad you said that. I feel rejuvenated because I do. Because yeah. um, I feel like I'm the I'm in the best position I've ever been in my life. Mm-hmm. And it look I know it's easy to say that because of the position I'm in, but internally as well, more than just what I'm doing. Okay. Um, I feel like I found my real happiness again. Mm. Um, my real happiness started from just literally wanting to change my position. Yeah. Like I said, I was broke. Yeah. Like I was finished. Mm. Yes. The trims were not as frequent. <laughs> you know, the money was not coming in at all. You know, they wasn't calling me. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, so during that period of the process of me actually doing and changing my life, I started to see things changing and I was like, that was making me feel happy. Mm. Then I achieved what I thought was success, which was, I don't know, followers or um jobs consistent income and stuff then i lost track of just general happiness like within my family within myself and Mm. my day-to-day um didn't realize but i was working really really hard for a good year and a half Mm. not really giving myself breaks because i thought if i really want this to be successful i need to be working harder than everyone else even people like yourself bro i see you upload every week i said how dare i not work as hard or even more harder than someone who Mm -hmm. has even achieved more so that was my thing and i got lost in that yeah Stop being happy doing the work I was doing. Mm. And COVID came, which for me was the biggest blessing because that was my time to reflect mm. on everything and start to appreciate all the good things that's happened because um, essentially this was all a dream. Yeah. You know you know you want to be successful and you think, 100%. okay, cool. I'm going to make it and I know this is going to happen, but when it actually happens, it's very overwhelming. Mm. So um, then I had my son as well, which for me, again, during COVID was the time where I was like reflecting and I started mm. to become more happier, started to wanted to record again, wanted to just do it for the purpose of entertainment. And yeah. now I'm in that place now. And like you said, like I just feel more happy. I'm more on working and I'm working with my friends again. Mm. So it's just, I feel much more better than I did before. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, that's so good to hear, man, because it's like, it's very rare that you can, most times if, if you see someone at an event, well, what are you saying, man? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm blessed. Mm. That's just that's just a, a calling card. Mm. You might as well have it on your chest. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, man's good. Yeah, like I'm I'm good. I'm I'm good. But at, there, there's times where you're where you're not, or there's times mm. where you are stressed and you're busy. But you you don't. No one says that. Mm. Hey, hey, how are you, man? Man, stressed because yeah. I got dry patches in my hair <laughs> and I'm tired. <laughs> like no one's ever gonna do that. But it's very it's very positive and reassuring for for people listening. Where you know you you can. 
I think it's just like look after this person in here a little bit. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And say, right, like, yeah, like I'm I'm doing well and I'm happy and I'm and I'm feeling happy. So you've made your mark on social media as such, yeah. So is it is this all you wanted to do? Like no. when when you were when you were say, let's say you're like you're 16, mm. you're from Peckham, yeah. What did you want to do? Bro, that's mad. Um Probably at 16, I wanted to be a successful roadman. Yeah. Successful in a sense of have the money, have the cars. I want gal on me. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted that lifestyle because that was my environment. That's what I was seeing as successful. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> people going to university and, and, and I used to look at that as nerdy. Like, mm. who wants to go when you could be cool and be like, <laughs> yeah. do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So my wires were definitely crossed at 16. Um, mm. But one thing before all of that was I loved entertainment and drama. Mm. So in school, a few lessons really caught me, which was history, English literature, PE and drama. Mm. That's something that I always loved. I used to always mimic my wife and kids and Jamie Foxx and all these people because those were the people that brought entertainment to my house when I was mm. younger. 100%. So um, in the back of my head, that's what I wanted to do. But my situation wasn't allowing me to do that. I wasn't yeah, yeah. Nobody was taking jokers seriously. 100%. Do you know what I'm saying? So that mm. was my, my, I was my own block it like stumbling block for myself um mm. but then i always wanted to just entertain i felt like people always just say you're mad funny like you always make us laugh like yeah, you should yeah. do what these people are doing and the only people that was really doing stuff was poet okay vuj don't jealous me mm. and i was thinking oh jazzy i was thinking no nah, i can't do that they're, they're too gone i can't yeah, do yeah, that yeah. maybe one day it will happen in it um so it was hard for me to find a route in there until like snapchat and social media and stuff started happening and we started seeing people like yourself bust through i was like Actually, you know, if I get my camera and just record myself, mm. something will come from this. I don't know what I want to do, but yeah. something will come from it. I know mm. someone will pick me up and say, you know what, we, we so at least I'll put my career in someone else's hands. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I think as years went on, I just started to realise, okay, cool, there's something there for me. And mm. then I just did it. I don't know what I did. I just put myself out there yeah. and everything just started working. Yeah. So when I was 16, I know I just wanted to be a, a roadman. But deep down, I wanted to just get into acting, entertainment, comedy, stand up, something that mm. would just I can I know I'm good at. Yeah. Um. And here we are, man. So it, it's so it's so funny that you say that because I think at times when you're young, the re and that's the reason why I said 16 because mm. I felt like if you say what did you want to be when you were as a kid? When I was a kid, I wanted to be a fireman at one mm. stage because mm. I had a fireman hat. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like I want to be a fireman. <laughs> like, Did you have that? What was it? Have you got a picture of it? <laughs> yeah, it's like the yellow one oh, with, a, with a visor kind of fireman thing. Fireman something. I had a fireman's hat. I had a policeman's hat as well. Mm. I think I wanted to be a policeman at one stage because I was just into like cops and robbers and yeah, stuff, yeah, innit? Yeah. So I was into that stuff. I wanted to be a soldier at one point. Just like- Can you imagine Mo on the field? <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> just making everyone laugh when it's wartime. <laughs> That's long. Big man, if I'm- it, Listen, <laughs> listen, if, if there's any war- and they're doing a national call up, big man. I'm trying to be a chef or something, <laughs> blood. Or something. Like, so when you give them the food, man, there you go, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'm on the ships doing the entertainment or something, bro. <laughs> we gotta go out. I hear that, but I've got the lineup for tonight's uh, uh, entertainment, you man. So <laughs> I don't Maybe know, bro. <laughs> yeah, but good luck, you man. Yeah. Don't forget your bullets. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think I think I always say like that kind of age of 16 mm. because. I think that is the realization where you're not a child, yeah. you're about to be an adult. Mm. But it's it's very easy at 16 to be like, raw, like my friend's doing this. I think that's what I should do. And I think it's re it's really interesting when you said, you know, you you wanted to to be on the roads because mm. what's really interesting is around that time, especially if you grew up, mm. let's say within I don't know, you could grow up anyway to be mm. fair, but when you when you are 16 and you're around people, it's it's really interesting because there's some people that want to be on the roads for, there's two reasons. Mm. And one reason it could be, I want to be on the roads because I see my man with a, with a blacked out, you know, was it back then? Maybe like an Astra. Yeah. Smart car, maybe. Pe Peugeot 206, 206 or something. Corsa. Yeah, yeah. Blacked out with rims. Jalera, Jalera DNA. Jalera 220, don't get me mad. <laughs> yeah. With the Air Max 95s. <laughs> yeah, so let's yeah, be yeah. serious now. Or when it's summertime, you start seeing the man them on the R6. Oh, that's crazy. With, with the sock. With the yeah, sock. Yeah. And the hat, you <laughs> know the hats, the visors <laughs> up, chain, sovereign ring. Yeah, Please, oh, man. Sovereign. Come on, bro. The sovereign ring, boy. Buying everyone ice cream, bubblegum and lemon. <laughs> yeah. Let's be serious, bro. I want to be him. Hear what I'm saying, big man. Hey, go shop for me, yeah? 
Take a little two pound for yourself. What two pound in the two chicken shop for is me is equivalent to Bitcoin right now. Wow, that was that was. But it's, I and re, the reason why I say there was two people. There's two types of people because actually maybe three types of people. There was the person that wanted to be on the roads for everything you could get. Mm. You can get girls. You can get. Uh, you get there's a level of clout you can get. Um, and you can kind of be the man because mm. if you're 16 at that time in school, you might be the man. You might just mm. be the funny guy at school. So you're mm. like, wait, when I go to school, maybe not in the ends. When I go to school, I'm the funny guy and the good looking guy. Um, you can almost live a, 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 a double life as such. But then there's also this other person who's like, I need to be on the roads because my mum has no money. We have no money. Mm. And it's really interesting you say that because some people do it for a reason. You're like, bruv, you're not even about this life. You just want all the good things that come with it. Mm. Whereas there's someone who's like, I can see why he is out at like 3 a.m., on his push bike, and I get that because he's in a he's his environment is like whoa he's he's broke, mm. like he's not he's broke but his family are in a place of like he he's the breadwinner by going out, and then there's the other person who's like a little bit like yourself and even myself in some ways where the man them say big man you're not this is you're not you're not that guy mm. you might get teased and you're like right why are these men always teasing me mm. and it's weird because someone's like they're teasing you like bro you're not about this mm. and I was that person I was easily that person I just used to kick ball. And I was never trying to be like on the roads like that. I weren't ever, but you know, I'd hang around with people. My mum's saying I've got to be in at nine o'clock. I'm, like, I'm staying up till 11. What do you mean? But my mum was like, what are you doing? You should come out in her slippers. What are you doing? <laughs> come on. And I'm like, mm. and they're laughing at me. And it, that helped so much when I look mm. back at it now. So are you in a place now that, you know, you have a son and you know, you're, you're very, you're, you're very successful right now, you know? So, are you in a place of like, rah, I really need to teach my son, not like, I want, you know, no one teaches their son about the roads, mm. but are you very kind of conscious of the environment that you bring your son up in? 100%. Um, <clears throat> but I want my son to go through real life experiences. I don't mm. want to shelter my son from the reality that can come and harm him in the future. Mm. I want him to be aware of things that I, my parents weren't aware of. Yeah, Because um, yeah. my parents only told me, don't go here. Mm but not why. Yeah, 100%. And they didn't tell me, okay, cool, you're going to make some mistakes. I'm here, just talk to me. Mm. I didn't have that relationship with my parents because they didn't know any better. Mm. So for me, I came from a good home, great yeah, home, yeah. Muslim background. Mm. My mom and dad both work jobs. Mm. Sometimes I have to stay at a child miner's house because they both are working. Yeah, I come yeah. from that, making sure that there's no lights coming off. My sky never run out. Mm. I come from that home, innit? Jeez, my dad's sky though, <laughs> yeah? yeah? Come, no, one thing about my dad, he loved football, bro. Uh, so he was sick. making sure sky was dead there. <laughs> yeah. Get me? And I well, was making sure- So hold on, back then you had sky and the football package. The package, bro. No, <laughs> do you know one thing? I used to think my dad done fraud because I was thinking, <laughs> yeah. I know, I've seen, I've opened up my dad that bank slips one time and yeah. saw what you're working with this month. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking, how are you, how are you doing this? Something's wrong. Yeah. You're selling something on the, on the side. But anyway, so I've come from that, innit? And it's like, mm. I saw my friends stay out late. Mm. I saw my friends not have the discipline that I had because my parents were very protective over me. Mm. Not knowing it's because their parents are going through financial problems. Maybe their dad's not about. I had mm. a lot of friends who, their pops, I've never seen them before. Yeah, yeah, so and yeah. I'm seeing a mum who is it's hard to look after three sons mm -hmm. and one, one of them's 16, one of them's 13 and it's like, it's hard. You end up giving up. Mm. So I was attracted to the fact that how come you can stay out late and I can't? Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Not knowing the deeper meaning behind that was because they didn't have a fat home that I had. Mm. And I'm attracted to that, being able to go out and being cool and yeah, getting yeah. all the trainers. 11 o'clock at night, what do you mean? After you 11 o'clock at night, I dream of that. <sighs> Wow. I lie in bed dreaming that I can be one of those kids making noise. Mm. I can't. So, summer holidays as well. 8 p.m. <laughs> my dad would warn me and say, if you don't come back, <laughs> then you'd walk away. <laughs> Not finish the sentence, just because <laughs> that means everything. That, hmm. So like now I've seen that I've learned lessons that my dad used to always warn me about and say, okay, cool. One day when you have your son, you're going to learn. You're going to understand what this means. Mm. Um, obviously at 25, you have me. At 40, you learn much more lessons than you've known. Mm. So what you're teaching me might not say it's wrong, but it's not the way you should communicate with your child. It? And, I, and I'm learning that now with my son. I'm not going to be onto him, but I'm going to talk to him. I want my son to be able to say, you know what? If I catch my son doing a madness, mm. did you do that? Yeah, yes, yeah. dad. Okay, cool. Let's have a conversation. Mm. You get me? If you do anything disrespectful, I need to squeeze your hand a little bit so you know. Yeah. The next one's a slap. <laughs> but it's, it's those little things that I know that I... Yeah, I 
messed with my pops and it's nothing to do with him it's more the generation that we're in 100 um, most definitely but definitely came from good home definitely shouldn't been part of that but my environment the school i went to i was a good in year eight bro everyone knows me i was a comedian bro mm. just cracking jokes yeah yeah until someone tries to move to you and it becomes a current thing and you're just like there's no way this is happening mm. so that i change because of my environment mm. at home with my friends funniest guy ever but in the streets you turn into a different person 100%. and i had to adapt to that and it wasn't good because my heart was always going to win over everything my mm. so what i was hardening was, it was always going to break. Mm. So that's why I wasn't successful in that journey and I'm successful in this one because this is what essentially was always in my heart. So it's it's a great thing and I think my son will have that same kind of blessing to be able to be himself, learn from his mistakes, have mm. someone that's not going to judge him unless he does something wild and he has to be taught a lesson. Apart yeah, from that, yeah. then it is what it is. Because growing up, is what I say growing up, you went to secondary school in the early 2000s yeah, but it was... It, it Tough. Was, listen, bruv. Survival of the fittest, When you bro. had to... You, balls in your phone. What do you mean, bruv? I took out my SIM card <laughs> and I put it underneath my tongue. <laughs> yeah. You try to take this phone for me. <laughs> yeah, this, no, it's not happening, bro. And that's the, the, the... Bro, those lessons, I promise you at the time, hated them. Mm. Those lessons taught me a big one. 100%, man. Stuff I would never, ever been able to learn. Yeah. Ever. I think... Do you know what it is? It's, it's quite weird now because I feel like... Now there's things in place where mm. like, it's not like I couldn't go to certain areas. Mm. I was not on the roads, mm. but I just weren't allowed. Mm. People say, Big Man, you're going there. <laughs> nah, bruv. <laughs> good luck. You know what people say? Good luck, bruv. You hear stories. Big Man, you know, they take trainers. Mm. Go there. They go to the ends. Yeah. Then man, take your shoes, you know. Just and do it. W- the weird thing is my dad was a raster, innit? So mm. I'd, I'd go to my dad's on the weekend and... I'd be like, oh, dad, like, my mum weren't trying to buy me any of the nice crepes. Mm. But if I go to there, they had a Foot Locker in Brixton. So if I'm with my dad, I'm like, dad, let's go Foot Locker, man. My dad's always into like, yeah, mum, yeah, yeah, check, check, yeah, not, not Nike boot. Yeah, man. What's your name, Nike boot? Then I'm like, so dad, can I, can, I, can I get these ones? He's looking at the price. And I'm looking at him like, come on, bruv, you're, you're not really there. <laughs> like, <laughs> if anything, you should be getting me these crepes, <laughs> innit? So I was quite fortunate to have sick crepes when I was going to school and stuff. Mm. But at the same time, when I'm back on the ends, mm. man, I'm like, bro, you got TNs? Mm. Like, yeah, my dad bought them for me. Yeah, bruv. Don't go there, bruv. They'll jack your, they'll jack your crepes, mm. bruv. I was like, okay, all right, fair enough. Wait, 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 wait. Do you know what the maddest <laughs> thing is, yeah? There were certain areas, yeah, that just sounded like, like war. Like Wandsworth. <laughs> That area always just sounded very <laughs> bloody to me. Like, it always gave me, yeah, there's people shoot at you from the building. You know, you know what's so mad about when you say Wandsworth, yeah? Because I used to play for a team. Uh, I used to play for this team <laughs> called, called Southwark Youth, yeah. yeah? So it's better, all the youth clubs, In Southwark. It's, they, they yeah, yeah. made a team, yeah, yeah? yeah? So we train at, and it was actually quite good because now you grow up, you see certain man on, you see, oh, well, I'm big man. You're all right. Yeah, yeah. But it was quite, it was, it was good back then because it allowed other people from different youth clubs mm. to all play football with each other and just mm. get along with each other and stuff. But obviously we got on the bus, back of the bus, everyone's mm-hmm. talking. We're like 15 at this time, innit? There was one guy, he lived in Tottenham, innit? Mm. And he used to play for our team. I remember we was in Wandsworth. I think it was at like a bus, de- bus depot or something. We all mm. went on the bus ready to play football. I think we was going, I can't remember going to him back or some kind of football pitch somewhere. And then there's a, there's these bag of youths. So, you know, the rules is mm. just look forward, bruv. Mm. We're busting jokes. Don't look at these guys. Because, you, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you know when you be at certain bus stops? Yeah. Campbell McDonald's. Worst. Yeah. Campbell That's McDonald's. Rob me now. 3.30, you got all the schools there. What, Sacred yeah. Heart? All the schools Ramsey, are there, innit? Tennessee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything, yeah. And, and, Everyone, half of these schools, you've got one school there, one yeah. school there. And I was at the Niki bus stop. I'm yeah. at the 185. <laughs> 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 near, near, near the drug. Yeah, yeah. Nothing really goes on there. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the, you can pick someone off there on the, on, on the low. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, near, I'm like, and I'm like right near the cash point where mm. the Barclays is. So like, yeah, like I'm away from ETC, mm. essentially, innit? ETC, you're yeah. deeper. Yeah, That's yeah, why yeah, I used yeah, to get yeah, my, yeah, my, my yeah. papers and all that. <laughs> yeah. hey, you're deeper still, ETC. Yeah, so I'm yeah. away from what's really yeah. going on, innit? Yeah. I'm just like, yeah, you know, but yo, where, 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 where you from? Yeah, I'm from, um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> big Depends. boss. Where are you from? Um, Forest Hill. Yeah. Uh, cool, 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 cool. What Forest Hill? From Get Olden, yeah? Whoa. Um, uh, no, <laughs> you know you have to think quick. Yo, Forest Hill boy, 
No, I'm not. Um, shit. Uh, I'm from I'm from Hernhill. Hernhill. What's Hernhill? From Brixton. <laughs> you from Brixton? Oh fuck. Um, I'm from um. Oh man, you trying to think of any location, but then I would have said Devon. I remember. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm just visiting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, we used to lie. Yeah. I said, <laughs> but where are you? Yeah, bro. Sprout? Cool. You see, I I lived in Peck. I lived in Bermondsey. Yeah. But I was from Peckham. Yeah. So I always used to say That's Bermondsey. That's area affiliations. Yeah. So, so if I you're from Bermondsey, you're from Peckham. Yeah. If you're from East Dulwich, Peckham. Campbell. Peckham. Peckham. None Peckham. Peckham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I used to say I'm from Bermondsey. Yeah. But I used to say an accent. Yeah. From Bermondsey, innit? <laughs> so that's like, oh, you little coon, man. Whatever. <laughs> Let him slide. So I was like, <laughs> we go again, man. We go again. Bro, trust me. You have, like those times there. But anyway, oh, you were saying one's with. No, nah, I remember he was from Tottenham Seat. Yeah. This is that big man just look forward, innit? Yeah. So then he's looking at the youths. He's looking at him. You know, he's like, what? <laughs> and I'm looking at, what are you doing, bruv? The way these guys came Skim- on the, oh. the back door of the bus. You know when the driver will try and dress it? And you know back then you could open yeah, it. Yeah, you can press it even. On, you can press outside, it, yeah. opened it, came upstairs. What? 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 Hey, who's on the bad man thing? You, yeah? Bruv, the way this guy said, no, no, I'm just saying. Uh, yeah. I'm Frozen. just saying, innit? <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny because it's, mm. it's not funny, mm. but at the same time, the lengths you would go to, mm. you'd be like, wow. Like my dad lived in Brixton. So I'd go to my dad's house. I'm going through Angel Town, innit? Mm. Gotta go to my dad's house. I'm going through Mikesfield Estate, innit? Mm. But at this time, I don't really know what the severity is of what, mm. of what it is going through these estates. Mm. I'm just like, I'm going to my dad's, innit? Mm. And one time I had to go to my dad's early to get some money for football. And I, I, my dad was gonna give me like 35 pounds. You know, if you're a teenager, 35 pounds is a lot That's of money. a million pounds. So I said, yeah, man, yeah. 35 pounds, I'll go to my dad's house. It must have been eight in the morning. And I thought, no one's gonna be out yeah. eight in the morning. And I go to my dad's, but one you came around the corner. Well, go on, fam. Where are you going, little man? I said, no, I'm going to my dad's house. Who's your dad, blood? <laughs> Who's your dad, blood? <laughs> so I said, I told him my dad, oh, oh, that's your dad, yeah? Okay, the, the roster man. Okay, say no more, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, go to, go to, bro. Every time I see that guy, I was like, you know, when you, you beg it. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. You good? Yeah, right, yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right, that's when see people like me. I'm African, isn't it? That was me trying to be Jamaican. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. They don't know Bridget. Yes, yes. Do you remember when we used to say heavy? All right, that's heavy, Vlad. <laughs> Oh my, what an awful way of speaking. <laughs> Heavy. Yo. But, but that's what I'm saying. Even when you mentioned that, yeah, that was like, that's not healthy. No, 100%. Because like, it's very traumatic. Like I remember saying to my mum, we're mm. not going Lewisham shopping centre. You've got to send me back to Sierra Leone if you think I'm going there. Yeah. I'd rather go back and, and live in Sierra Leone. Because parents didn't understand. They it. didn't understand the severity mm. of the fact that if they catch me and, they, and I usher the word... Mom, you're getting bold as well. Mm. And this is not, <laughs> this is not, this is, I'm not lying to you, mom. You might hold one. You get me? They scared me. They scared, like, I don't want that situation for you, mom. I'd rather we both just stay at home. If anything, go with dad on the weekend. Do you get me? It's safer that way. So for me, like, but even jokes aside though, that, sh- that is very traumatic stuff. <clears throat> Sorry, very, very traumatic stuff because mm. no kid at 16 shouldn't be able to travel. Mm. Um, and then I started to see the, the effect it was having having on my family, mm. um, seeing that like obviously I might drive past on a bus and you see me with like thirty youths outside McDonald's in Peckham, bro. Mm. and knowing that you're not you didn't raise that child that way. Mm. So I, I'll say all through until I became like twenty five, I was living the wrong way, and then I just made a conscious decision for the next two years to change everything, mm. get my first job, go into uni. A lot of people don't know I worked in a prison, Ellsbury Prison, as a mentor mm. for a year. That was me trying to just like rehabilitate young people and let them know that I've lost <coughs> near enough everything um, and haven't got nothing to show for it. Mm. But here's your chance. You lot have got three years left in your sentence because that's who I was working with. Everyone had three years left in their sentence. And during that period, I started to tap into my own mental issues that I was not aware of. The trauma of the stuff that's happened to man, mm. the things that I've seen, things that I was part of, all of that other stuff. And then it's like dealing with that was a crushed me in it. It's like a little big breakdown for me. Mm. And then that's when I started to realize that the stuff we've gone through, anyone, whether you've been robbed, whether you've been stabbed, whatever's happened to you, it's good to talk about it. And I did a lot of that. I did a lot of talking about it. And that's what changed me. That's what allowed me to use whatever's happened to me and make jokes about it. Mm. Um, It's kind of like laugh at my pain Mm. with um, like Kevin Hart's way of doing things. Yeah, yeah. Um, Nothing as severe as his stuff, but I just made sure I used that as a point of reference so I can say, okay, cool. We build off that. 
Mm. Um, so that's why whenever I look back at the past, I'm always happy because that stuff, I would never not have gone through that. I would never change anything I went mm. through because it taught me so much valuable lessons. Yeah. Gave me a hunger that I have now. Mm. I think if I didn't go through that, I wouldn't know what hard work is. Yeah, or yeah. Um, getting my first job and working in retail. Mm. That's why I respect people at retail so much. If I, if I go on. into an Asda, Tesco, whatever, I put back the stuff that I put because My guy, I know on. what it feels like when come you're on. facing up everything <laughs> yeah. and then one idiot comes and just takes it out <laughs> and drops it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Looks at you. <laughs> and goes to the till. And you're just thinking, Trust see your mum? <laughs> Watch. You get me? So it's for me, I've, I just appreciate that. I think, I think, I feel like everyone in their life needs to experience retail. <laughs> I think retail is most probably, as a job, mm. one of the most humbling experiences you can go through. 100%. Because you can be standing at the door and all your job is to do is just say hello to people. Mm. And you realise, you're like, Rah, people can't even say hello. You just look. Mm. I've had people look in my face. Hello, you're right, madam. Welcome to Levi. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting there just like, uh, what? <laughs> And I'm fuming. <laughs> and I'm sitting there just like, whoa, okay. Um, and every part of me is just like casting. Mm -hmm. It's fucking dickhead. Look at shit crap. Sketches. Who wears sketches? <laughs> no one wears sketches, but you're wearing sketches, you dickhead. What's the other one? A6. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't stand those horror but, but not, But not the, um, you know, they got them kind of like cool ones. The no, the new ones. shaped ones are right. Yeah, yeah, but I'm talking yeah. about you look like you're about to run any minute now. Any minute. Like with your suit on as well. <laughs> ready to twist. <laughs> so yeah, I, I can't stand those people. I think what I realised as well with retail, it's, I think, you know, the hardest thing is for, for me when I was in retail is retail is this, is really hard experience because everyone knows sometimes you can have days, in, you can have days in retail. It's so easy. Mm. You're like, raw, man got paid 50 pounds today. Done nothing. Chilled. Chapped my regions, sold some products, done. Then you can have really hard days mm. where you've got a manager just being like, yeah, can you move the coat hanger to the left a bit? Mm. And you're like, what's wrong with this? There's nothing wrong with this. your mum to do it. Like, yeah. You, really? know, like, yeah. you know, like in retail, yeah? I think if you've worked in retail, you've always thought of like, do you know what? I'd risk it all and bang this guy in the face. <laughs> Literally. You, every, you, everyone. Literally, you, blood. We've all thought that. If you've worked in retail, you haven't had that, you work in a great place. Great place and you should stay there. Stay there. You're in a great position. I, 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 my, my come up was because of my manager. Yeah. This short little guy. Yeah. And I realised when I found out that he only earns 20p more than me or 40p more than me. Yeah. I was like, how dare you? It's how mad when... How dare you speak to me <laughs> after you just 20 pence more than me. And you think you can speak to me. And he was so short. I was just thinking, I'll knee you. <laughs> and you'd be knocked out. I don't even have to use my hands. And it's just like, it gave me a, just a hunger yeah. to just want to be... My own boss. And leave as well. And leave, yeah. More importantly, forget the, the own boss stuff. Man. Just to get out of that place. Mm. I'd rather be broke than work for you. Yeah, That's yeah, how yeah. I felt in it. And But it's, it's it's mad because the pressure that they get from the top, yeah, mm. kind of, you just become, ah. yeah, it's mad. So I saw that side of it, but then certain people are just pricks. When, when you see managers crying, when the area managers come in, mm. you're like, rah, you was talking to me like a mug, but you're crying now. Area managers come like Thanos. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. When the area manager's coming through, your store is Perfect. But the area manager, you'll notice how they don't really talk to us a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had one area manager when I was working at Reese. He'd come in, like if there's staff that have been there for time, he knows mm. him. You're right. Yeah, okay. Mm. I'm trying to beg it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. All right. <laughs> okay, this guy's a dickhead. What's going on? <laughs> people are like, that's the area manager, you know? Oh, okay. But then people say, bruv, it's not, it's not here for you. Yeah, it's yeah. here for the manager. Yeah. Then you, you listen in the, in the kitchen. <laughs> this is it in the kitchen. Uh-uh. Because the AVT isn't up. And what, what's going on with the standards <laughs> out there? You got this new guy. He's got, he's wearing, look at his shoes. And then you're like, oh, he's still ready? You, you know, you listen. And the manager comes out, eyes sweated. Um, okay, guys, I'm just going to have a quick cigarette break. Um, uh, yeah. And you're looking at your manager like, right, boy. Or you get a text you in the, the morning. You get a text in the morning. <laughs> guys. We've had a serious review. Standards need to change from now on, moving forward. This is the, bro, it's funny because, but I love Yo. that though, man. I think, see the come up for me, yeah? Yeah. Taught me, like, it's not even about the lessons it taught me, yeah? It just taught me that, okay, cool. Everybody has to struggle. Everybody's got to go through something. And the yeah. ones that sort of succeed are the ones that work harder than everyone else. Mm. There was always this guy at work, yeah? Mm. I hated him, but I loved him because mm. he would always do work to a level that, 
We're just like, bro, just just keep the level down a little bit so everyone else can just... (laughs) But you're just moving mad and you're the standard (laughs) and whatnot. But he ended up leaving that job, yeah? Yeah. And he's got his own company now. So we laugh about it sometimes. I'm just like, bro, you used to move mad, bro. He goes, bro, because I had a job. He goes, bro, in my back of my head, I just needed peas for six months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I love the fact that for me, it gave me that thing to go into my next thing, which is this now, Mm. and just go for it. But now I just feel like, you know... In the beginning, it's like, yeah, I want to change my financial situation. Mm. Then I want to be the best. Yeah. But now I feel like there's so many other people that are the best. Mm. For example, when we got nominated for the MOBO, yeah, mm. I knew I wasn't going to win that. Yeah. But I was just happy that I'm in that category as 100%. the media personality. When you look at who's the best online right now, my name's getting mentioned. Mm. And that's all I wanted for myself. Yeah. So now, like, my happiness is in other places now. Mm. It's Obviously, of course, it's my work, but having a kid. Yeah. Mending all the things that happened with me and my family. We're mm. in the best place ever. Yeah. Building back home, sorting out my credit, mm. just being an adult now. And then these things are happening because of the sacrifice that I made. Mm. So it's deeper than just the success now, man. It's just yeah. about being happy, bro. And then COVID, I didn't think that we would be able to get through COVID because I just mm. thought mentally that was draining. Yeah. Do you get me? My hairline was just bouncing up and down. Do you get me? I'm just eating bare food. I remember there was some yak in my house, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Some Henny and I was just like, all right, cool, it's lockdown. Don't have to work. <laughs> holiday. You, holiday. It's holiday. Lit. You know what I'm saying? It's hot outside. Our COVID will be about a month. Yeah, yeah. we'll deal with it. 100%. So cool. Um, so I had this Henny now. I'm playing uh, GTA. Boom, boom, boom. Sipping, 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 getting fresh and that. The next day I've gone and it's empty and I said, hold on, what's going on there? It's a little problem. When I got another one now, I'm eating bare, sitting down, I'm not doing nothing. Mm. Then I just started getting used to it. It reminded me of when I was broke. Oh, and I was just like, oh my God, I'm unmotivated again. Yes. I'm I'm back there. I'm back where mm. I used to lie. Bro, you know the office, US office? Yeah. I have bittersweet memories about that. Because mm. I used to sit down and watch that when I was broke and brock. Mm. The press is a bumber. And it was the only show that used to give me joy. So to cut you, did you go Asda 24 hours in Old Kent Road to get a snack? Stop snacks? it, Mo, man. Were you watching me? <laughs> was you watching me, bro? And the thing is, I never had, uh, I wasn't <laughs> driving them times. So I used to ride my bike. I used to ride my bike looking like I'm selling drugs. But these times I'm going to go and get snacks. Because they had these free strawberry laces you could get for a pound. <laughs> yeah. The butter kiss popcorn. Yeah, yeah, Reese's. Yeah. I started getting a bit bougie. Then mm. I'd buy like a tropical juice. Yeah. My, my room used to stink. Yeah. Cause all I do is fart and watch things. My mum used to come in and go, hmm, open the window. <laughs> in essence, yeah, bum, but open the window. So I'd open the window a little bit. Ah, you know when you open your 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 your, your covers oh, and you're like, whoo! I didn't know that was there. It's when you leave the room for a bit and you come, you come back. back and it's summertime, it's hot as yeah. well. You're like, Bro, my room smells mad, bro. Trust the me, The Doritos, man. you left the bag open. It's some on your bed. They're soft. They're, have, you, have you ever slept and you just felt like a biscuit crumb on your back? Come on, man. This is, I've been there. The crumb on your back and you're just thinking, dust, 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 dust. <laughs> Get it off quickly. The side of your bed when you hoover it the next day. Oh, shit. Just, ah, come on, and man. And the sheets are loose. You know, like, <laughs> you know when the sheets are loose? So all the crumbs are either coming in the middle and you're trying Don't to like, laugh. and sometimes the sheet will pop off. And you're like, oh, come on, man. Jarring. If I have to get up and re... And, bruv, you know where the sheet is loose? And you're like, oh, bruv, come on, man. I've got to get up. you got to do that one. Retuck the sheet in now. You've got to put two, two yeah, hands yeah, yeah. on. And then that one comes off. <laughs> oh, myth. It's a myth, bro. I'm not going to lie, man. That, so that's why, you see, when I, when, when I was lying down in COVID, I was like, it was just reminding me of where I was mm. back then. So I was just like, no, this ain't good. Yeah. And I remember just thinking, but I can't do nothing. It's not like I can open up anything. Mm. Luckily, I got a job to do mm. during this, like a week I was doing something with Sky Sports. So that helped me financially sick, as sick. well. But then I was just thinking, no, when stuff comes back, I need to find things to do mm. that are not work related because work can't be the reason why I'm stressed like this. Yeah, 100%. Um, so I urge anyone, because we all are going through this lockdown together. Mm. Some of us obviously are luckier to work, but if you ain't able to do anything that's not work related and that's where your muse is, I feel like you should find something else to do. Cause I'm trying to learn languages now as well. Mm. Starting to try and pray more, do other things that are not work related yeah, that yeah. are gonna help me feel happier. What, so. what, what language are you learning? Um, I wanted to learn Spanish. That's mad you said exactly, I wanted to learn that. Yeah, cause French but, is cool, but Spanish just sounds sexier. But you know Spanish, I think like you can go more places in the world and, and they speak, would speak Spanish. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And weirdly enough, I have this weird, imagination that somewhere I'll go somewhere and they're going to try and kidnap me to harvest my organs and speak in Spanish. And I'm like, what? 
You gonna man, do what? You man, we need to go now, bro. <laughs> no, but it's cool. Them man are buying us drinks and they're gonna bring the paella, <laughs> bro. There's poison in the paella. We need to go now, <laughs> bro. <laughs> um. So, what what is it that you done when you was in lockdown mm. that kept mm. your like? Because aside from being a creative, yeah, it's like you know we we can all sit at home and edit and all these kind of things. What do you do when you're not doing? You know, you're not being Harry Pinnell. What's What are your hobbies? I enjoy playing games. It's mad hit saying that, actually. Yeah. I feel like it's like man's doing a, a job interview. What are your hobbies, man? No, but it's, it's it's true because people don't get to see the normal side of me. Mm. Like, apart from work and stuff, yeah, I genuinely just love to chill. Yeah. Like, my days are going to go and chill with my brethren and we're just reminiscing about mm. old school times. Yeah, yeah, And we yeah. compare it to where we are right now. And mm. it's always like... That's a proper vibe. Yeah, like, it. and then also the people that I record with... Um, I've tried my best to get very close to them as friends. So yesterday, mm. Steve-O and Philly was at my house. Yeah, yeah. Because I want to take outside relationships. I mean, the, the relationships we have in work outside as well. 100%. So I chill with a lot of friends, play a lot of games, mm. watch football. Um, I'm around my family a lot more now recently as well. Just mm. just going to just chill with my mum. Because anytime I go to my mum's and I leave, it could be up here for like seven hours. Mm. Oh, you're leaving? Okay. <laughs> it's like, like I'm about to die or something, like right there and then. Like, So I'm just trying to just get into the, the, the things that I wasn't doing when I was in a bad place, mm. like my connections with my family and all other things. I'm just trying to be happy again. Yeah, so, um, yeah. But yeah, I'm a gamer, bro. Love games, love okay. watching movies um, mm. and, and anime as well. Mm. Big into anime. Yeah. Yeah, man. The thing is, it's mad because I know a lot of youths that are really into this anime stuff, but I feel like like if I tried to get onto it now, I feel like I'm too, I'm too far gone. That's what you think, Mo. I feel like there's a lot of catching up to Mo, do. we're near enough the same age, yeah. I started this a year ago. Yeah. If you come into my house and you see this room, you're going to think this guy's a top level nerd. No, but, but you see anime, are you watching like, like, are you watching all the Dragon Ball Z's anime? Or no, are you watching like the, the real so like, I'm Japanese, watching Korean? The, yeah, the Korean ones. I'm watching um, some of them are European ones, but anime as well. Mm. It's the meanings behind them, isn't it? Like, so yeah, yeah. with animes, there's always like a meaning mm. and it's that throughout the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Um and I didn't know how creative they were until I started watching them. I used to, used to just Dragon Ball Z and that. But there's some sick animes out there, bro. So for me, that's just like, I watch it and it's like, you could never do that with people. Mm. It has to be animation. It's too deep, it's too creative. And um, yeah, man, it's connected a lot of people with me as well, man. I've got a lot of friends that we actually watch anime and it's like, okay. I never would have thought myself doing this. When yeah, people say, yeah. I, I used to call it anime. Mm. Oh, them man there, boy. I used to call it anime, you know, bro. <laughs> you know, you know, you're saying a word and you think you're saying it right. And you're like, and someone says, what? What do you say? And you they know? get offended, bro. <laughs> what? When I said anime, oh, they could have killed me. <laughs> you see these, yeah? Comes de Cassons, yeah? Yeah. Man was calling them comes, comes, comes de Gracons. <laughs> Gracons. <laughs> I don't even have to say them now. What are they called? Comes de Casson. Okay, yeah, long day. Man was calling I'm just gonna them, say comsies. Coms de casson, but you say it quick. So if you're in the shop, yeah. like, big man, you got the converse comms de casson. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, we have them in the bag. Yeah, in man, the man, <laughs> went in, man was like, um, where well, you got those converses with uh, the heart and the eyes? I don't know. The com, com, um, com, comms de grackens, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the way this one was looking at, we don't sell this one. Is he French? I was don't he know, the Spanish one. We don't sell this one, no. Uh, comms de gracken? I don't know. Um, no. And I'm like, oh, they, they're hot on the, oh, come take a song. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> bruv, I felt like a dickhead, bruv. Like a fob, fob. Bruv, there's some jeans as well. I bought a pair of these jeans, yeah? Even now, I don't even know the name of them. But I see bare people wearing the jeans. Mm. Bare rappers and footballers. Mm -hmm. so, mm. The sale's on. Mm. Mr. Porter. Yeah. Man's going to get a pair of these jeans, yeah? yeah? So I said to him, I might even say, what are they called? A, a Miri? Yeah. Is that what they called? A Miri jeans? Yes. Am I saying it right? Stop this. Tell this guy to stop. Am I saying it right? Tell this guy to stop immediately. Yeah. You see Mo, yeah? <laughs> Mo's got everything. No, no, Am no, Am I no, saying no. it right? <laughs> Amiri? Like he hasn't got like four pairs. Don't be silly. You, can, you think you can, you think you can pull wool over me? This is, uh, this is, you know what it is? Mo just played tax the other day. He's trying to, he's trying to just say, you know what? I stopped. I don't know. It was one of purchase. No, yeah, Amiri. Go and do that with me, Mo. Bro, I swear to you, I bought these jeans. I just kept seeing this name around, didn't it? Yeah. And I was like, oh, I want to get a pair of these jeans. But I see the price they actually were. Mm. I was like, nah, but when it was in the sale, mm. I thought, oh, it's an investment. Because jeans for me, I'd rather spend good money on jeans because yeah. you're bang out of jeans, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, of course. 
So I didn't know what they was called. A mirror, a Myra. Mm. Uh, or a, I thought what was it some Amani. Had some mm. next. What is what is this, bro? Mm. And I said, I think I said it. I think then I've said it right. But when I pronounced it to someone the other day, there's a like, nah, big man. Not, it's not called that, you know, bro. Them jeans you got. I said, yeah. I don't know, brother. It's, I don't know, bro. But got the jeans in it. Do you know what's so mad about this jeans stuff and the swag stuff? Yeah, mm. um, a, a mirror, a mirror. What you said. Um, with these jeans, yeah, yeah, I've, I've, and swag and stuff like that, yeah. Mm. When I first came into this game, yeah, had none of that, yeah. So all you're gonna see counts, is what bro. I have, yeah, my champion t- top, yeah, my Levi's <laughs> jeans, and my, my trainers, yeah. My trainers were my most expensive purchases, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I kept it smooth, yeah, yeah. Now that I have the money to buy this stuff, yeah, yeah. I don't want to do it no more, 100%. I just want to, obviously, I like designer stuff, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Mm, mm. But I do enjoy, yeah. <laughs> get me? I do enjoy just yeah. knowing I can buy it rather than buying it. 100%. Because I clocked, you wear it once, yeah? And this is one thing I hate about my, my followers, yeah? Mm. So I will film, say for example, like today, I might have three things to film and I'm yeah. wearing this outfit. Yeah. Those three things will come out at the same time. Yeah. You have people in my comments like, HP, we love you, bro, man. But bro, get new clothes. Oh. Then I'm just like, oh. Do you know what? Back in the day, this would probably affect me because I don't have the option to mm. buy the clothes. But now I do. I'm just like, let's just leave it. But right. before it used to hurt me because I'm seeing everyone else wear different clothes and being able to throw them away. Then I clocked. Rappers and people and artists mm. have stylists yeah. that bring the clothes for that shoot and take it back. Return it, bro. While I am spending my own money yes. buying clothes. 100%, bro. So when I found out, one day I went to do a shoot and there was like, yeah, wearing all this clothes and I'm thinking, right, do I get to keep this? Mm. Oh, she looked at me like, oh, <laughs> you're new to this, ain't you? <laughs> oh, bless you. It's actually rubbed my head. And I realized, okay, cool. Yeah. I don't really need to do this stuff. And mm. I'll have a stylist for a shoot. On my day to day, when I want to go out, I'll buy clothes for that. Yeah, um, yeah, like, yeah. That was a good lesson that I learned. But the comments mm-hmm. were in the beginning stages, they used to murder me. Oh, bro. Had when? this one Calvin jumper. Yeah. Rinsed what? it so much. Calvin Klein, delete- yeah? Yeah, I deleted two pictures. <laughs> Deleted two pictures. Calvin Klein was like the first, <laughs> when I first started getting a little bit of money, yeah. That was your go-to brand. Calvin can't go wrong. Boxers, nice little jacket. No, the boxers, yeah, but the guns, I never really know anyone yeah, to, yeah, to yeah, of course you wouldn't, but <laughs> horror. They were, they were horror. Um, but the come up was real. You know, you know TK Maxx? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You find that one Woo! item that you want. Listen, bruv, you go TK Maxx, you're, you're searching, searching, he's like, whoa. It's hard because sometimes you'll see it and they're like, this ain't really my size, but... Hey, man can, can make it work. You know, you're looking at it like triple X, but, but if I roll up the sleeves a bit, we're oversized. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, you know when oversized is now is fashion. Yeah. Whereas back then you're like, it's just baggy, innit? Bruv, wear your size, you mug. Bruv, listen. I remember wearing my dad's shirt, Ralph shirt. <laughs> yeah. And my boy, oh, God rest his soul, <laughs> baited me out in front of everyone. The, the classic fit. Bro, it weren't even. Yeah, classic. classic it weren't fit. even the fit. I knew as soon as you said your dad's, I was like, this is a classic. Bro, my dad was shirt. A, quite a big lad yeah. when I was younger as well. So I remember wearing it, yeah. And my brother was just like, he's wearing his dad's shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and he had an infectious laugh. Everybody killed yeah. me. And you know, so mad. The yeah. shirt, my dad had hanged it and it wasn't fully dry. Yeah, yeah. So it was half wet, but it was Ralph. And I knew, I knew girls was going to be there. <laughs> Bro, you know, like in my back, it was stuck to my back because it was wet. <laughs> yeah. And I remember going there just thinking, bro, I can't. It's sunny. I was just standing in the sun just thinking, you know, let me just make it dry for a bit. Yo. And then my boy me. Horrible, man. Man was wearing damp clothes sometimes, you know. You know when yeah. you got that banging t-shirt, you're like, oh, but this is the tea, man. It's the but it's not, it's a bit damp. You know, like the corner bits. You're like, you know what? Fuck it. Until someone's like, yo, what, what, what are you saying? <laughs> fam, you, you, you sweaty, yeah? <laughs> no, fam, just, yeah, bro. Fam, your t-shirt. Bro, you all sweaty in that, bro. Yeah, yeah it's got a condition in it, so like I get hot very quickly in it. But big man, don't touch me again, though. Like, <laughs> don't do that. Still, it's so mad that you say that because I feel like now when it comes to like you know people talk about drip, mm. and I see young people and I see the garments that they're in, and you're like, raw, you man are wearing that at that mm. age. Mm. I didn't even know that existed until I was like in my twenties, mm. or you know, like sometimes when. I feel as well, like when, when you first kind of get that big check, it's it's interesting you say that about Calvin Klein because you know, like you had your like, whoa, that is mm. the brand. Mm. Oh my gosh. When I get some money, I'm going to get some of that. Mm. I remember just, I remember doing a comedy show once and getting a decent little, a little paycheck from it. And I was like, cool. My go-to brand, Fire Trap. No one's really wearing this Fire Trap. Don't kill me, I bought a Fire Trap t-shirt. <laughs> I bought the hat. I was one of those guys. 
Or well, the hat. Because you know, like, it's, yeah. it's, it's a designer hat, isn't it? Fire trap. And be honest with you, horror show. <laughs> yeah. Bruv. What a brand. At That's, this Blue time, That's Blue Ink's cousin. Bruv, at this time, it's funky house times, isn't it? Mm. So everyone's wearing some random man, man are wearing stockport jeans you know them brands are like right this is a bit niche super dry yeah super dry oh super yeah. dry them osaka six t-shirts oh, osaka. whoa don't play around when you was in a rave you seen a man had that i've actually got a picture of that with i was wearing that as that osaka jumper though yeah 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 uh true religion jeans Woo. and a gucci belt were they real true religions no though? they really was my wow. bad my boy bang f shout out to you yeah man them but yeah he's them <laughs> true religions said, oh they were the dream back then though man but, but they, at the same time, they was horrible jeans. Because the rebores made them look horror. Yeah. So if you've got the puff, the mad stitching, yeah. you, they look fake. But, but the it was, stitching was loud, bruv. It was so, it was Congolese. It was the loudest stitching I've ever... Like, to the point where uh, every part of me was like, oh, I really want to pair these jeans. But seeing that stitching, you could see it from space. French Montana. When I first saw French Montana wear those, I was like, huh? I want to I wear those jeans. Yeah, yeah. When I got them, because I didn't pay for them, they were like 300 pounds, 340. I was thinking, mm. what? That is everything I need in my account right mm. now. I'm not going to spend it on jeans. But I remember wearing them, yeah. And you know when you wear a certain pair of jeans that are so expensive and they're so past your financial <laughs> range, it doesn't even suit you. Yeah. It doesn't even look good on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember going to like a... Um, <laughs> A drink up on Boxing Day. Yeah. Had a Franklin and Marshall hoodie. Yeah. Uh, blue trainers. Ooh, okay. and, and and I had the, the True Religions. Mm. Do you think anyone spoke to me that day? <laughs> Nobody <laughs> spoke to me, bro. Like I'm all trying to like, you know, doing certain things. Like, can you see me? <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to, yo, my brother. I'm waiting for someone to say, <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro, yeah, you look decent today. No one said yeah, nothing yeah. to me. And I realized then and then it's not about the clothes. Yeah, yeah. It's you, big man, bro. Hundred percent. Because I think, at, like, you know, like at that time when you'd get, you, you know, you're saying you got your, your Franklin and Marshall, your, your True Religions, was you went Air Forces with them as Air, well? Blue Air Forces. Yeah. You know, when you had an outfit on, you're like, mm. you see, like, you see, like, that back then the outfit was like, whoa, this is my calling card. Mm. Look at my outfit. You just need someone to say, yo, big man, that, that jumper's sick. Where you get that jumper from? It mm. could be from the market. Mm. Yeah, like, it's still West End. You get me, mm, like, mm. West End. Because now it's like the watch, the car. Yeah. Even could be the Instagram pictures, mm, mm, mm. and it's so mad how far it's gone. Where it, it just used to be about the outfit, yeah. It was the one accessory. I used to have this watch, yeah. St- you know, Storm watch, Storm, you know, the brand Storm, <sighs> but they used to make these mad watches, mad watches. Was it the clink clink, like silver, silver watches? No, 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 they're like a proper, proper okay, brand cool, of watches, cool. but they'd always have like, um, they'd always try to they'd, they'd be a bit abstract sometimes. Mm, so mm. I had this one watch, yeah, and it looked like a submariner. Yeah, mm. a Rolex Submariner, but it had a um a see through buckle. Yeah, so when I wear this watch, my, my whole outfit is r- all about this watch. The watch, yeah. Yeah, I'm buying shirts with the sleeves short, just so, so you can, can see the watch. Just so yeah. you see this bit, it tucks in yeah. to the watch. Yeah, and I'm out, it's raving, skanking. I'm like, mm. come on, man, someone, mm. brother, it glows in the dark. Come yeah. on, someone must see the watch. I remember once one guy. And he had, a, he had a proper Rolex at mm. this time. You know, back then we didn't really know. Like, I know what yeah. it is, but I don't really know anyone yeah. with Or the, the different Rolex. And he said yeah. to me, he's like, right, that watch is sick. I said, what? You think this watch is sick? Mm. That is all I needed, mm-hmm. isn't it? Mm-hmm. But I, 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 <laughs> my friends once, for, I think it was my 21st birthday, mm. they got me another Storm watch, innit? <laughs> Your friends are bad, were they? <laughs> no. Nah. No, no, no. What it was? Storm watches for birthdays. <laughs> no, Shout out to Storm, because I hope it's a black brand. <laughs> But don't nah, be doing nah, it. It's, not. it's not a black brand. It's, it's even not. worse. The other brands are fake. You know where they now? <laughs> they always tell you you've, you've got to watch out for your mate. Stormwatch. <laughs> no, not even a, G, a, a Casio. Come on, man. Now listen, yeah. That back then, Storm. I don't know. If maybe now they had a shop on Carnaby Street. Okay. So you know, no one can chat shit. He's like, yeah, hey, man, Carnaby they Street, got a yeah. shop on Carnaby Street, bruv. Mm. So my friend's my birthday. They got all my friends out. Most you be listening to this, yeah. I think it's my at, at our, on our twenty firsts. Everyone was getting like, we'd all surprise someone, innit? And mm. be like, yo, all the men then put some money in, mm. got you a gift, innit? So I think I was the first one because I think my my birthday's February. So they got me this storm watch. And I was like, oh, bro, sick. Mm. I got me a storm watch. Mm. So I'm seeing this watch now, bro. The match, the watch was mad. You got up like, you see how they, I was saying the abstract, yeah? Mm. How they would tell the time is if it's one o'clock, it'll be one with mm. a red light. Then you've got, is it 10 past? Mm. It could be 10 past. But then it's five. So I'm looking at it and I'm like, it's 115 mm. because it's got the pin, but it's got it all in dots. Mm, mm, mm. So it's like an LED watch, bruv. The way I'm dyslexic looking at this watch, like, 
<laughs> um, yeah, I can't really wear this watch because mm. I'm trying to. You know, you try to say, "Bro, look, mm. check what mm. my watch can do." And at the same time, I'm like, "Yeah, I don't know where it's childish. You, man. This is childish. I would have preferred the money. Yeah, because you know what? You see, do you remember Shambalas? Oh, we spoke about this oh, when it was yeah, on it was man. on my podcast. Yeah, Shambalas. see, Shambalas for me. Yeah. yeah, that was my first piece of jewelry. Yeah, yeah, because. I thought no one can tell that it's not it's not real mm. until they start popping. Oh until, yeah, yeah, until yeah. I never me- had one of these though. I never had one. I, of these. I loved no. See that era of like dressing, yeah. We was definitely warped. Yeah. Because I look at the pictures and I look at it in disgust. Yeah. I look at my pictures when I was a kid. Yeah. I mean like three, four. Yeah. And I, I prefer to dress that way. Yeah. Than how I dress when I was. Hundred percent. Because I didn't have much options. Yeah. <laughs> you know when your wardrobe <laughs> is so thin, there's like a jacket, a jumper, <laughs> some jeans, a few t-shirts. And one or two things you can just mix and match. <laughs> that was my swag. And the Shambhala was the only thing that saved me, bro. Like I had these combats from Peacocks, yeah. <laughs> they were, um, were they brown? No, shout out Peacocks. No, Peacocks were supporting. Man, we're going Peacocks on come the on, low. Man. The one Primark, in Peckham, yeah. the one in Wharf Road. Wharf Road, and, come on, man. Um, do you remember Bon Marche? Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't play with me, man. Seriously, I'm, I'm old school. <laughs> so all of these places were my go-to places. And it's like those little things, yeah, when everyone had them, it's like we'd all follow, in it? Yeah. And going yeah. back to what you were saying about the young people, yeah. I remember going to a, a drink up the other day. Yeah. Someone I know, they was like, oh, you know, I work with this person. They said I should come through. So I was like, right, cool, I'll go. Mm. Way before lockdown, guys, if anyone's listening. Um, so I've gone in there and it's a young crowd. Yeah. So I'm thinking, what the hell am I doing here? Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, okay, cool, let's have a few drinks, we bounce, innit? Yeah. When I found out that the age was like 21, 22, I was even more shocked. Because yeah. everybody, the drip was nuts. Yeah. Like it's Dior, mad. left, right, and center. It's mad drip. Things that might, like me and my age and, and, and the position I'm in right now, even I think, oh, should I get, <laughs> should I go and get that? Should I? Mm. And I remember just looking at it and thinking, I can't be mad at these lot. Yeah. Because we wanted the Gucci when we was younger. Yeah. We wanted the stuff that we see rappers wear and we see all of these other things wear. And it's but like, what we wanted from Gucci was the belt and the hat. Mm. That's where we we was okay. Yeah, yeah. Because we didn't really know anyone who had a shirt, the, the yeah. jeans or, or shorts, backpacks, and... even the crepes. Mm. Like the the real money men roadman had the crepes with the boot cut jeans. Mm. You know them thin crepes. I got a picture like that. I was gonna pull up my Instagram <laughs> as well. I can't even see the trainers. <laughs> All you can see is the mouth of the Gucci. Everything. Do you remember the thin shoes? Do you remember the the back of your um your jeans? <laughs> But when the it's jeans just, are fraying. Yeah, and you just wow. got to cut them with the scissors before you step out. Man, we look at yo. Okay, yeah. Let me just snip that. But but that's what I say. But like when when it came to brands for us, mm. I remember the phase where your belt was your biggest purchase. Yeah, and it was like, whoa, I've got a belt. You tuck the belt in. You make sure everyone would see your belt. Mm. If you had a little bit more money, you might get the belt, and you might get a little uh, the the coin pouch. Oh yeah, the Louis. When I used to see people like that, I said, yeah, you yeah. definitely own five houses. Oh, listen, if I see yeah. you with a coin, man, didn't have no coins in it. No, nothing. We had a coin pouch with a matching belt. I said, nah, nah, you you have gone clear. Mm. So it's mad now because you know what is funny, yeah, is when I see the younger people, yeah, and they've got the drip, and I'm looking at it, and. I know, I know, I know my my from my Balenciagas to my whatever in it. And you're looking at certain stuff, and you're like, why have you got lime green Balenciagas? Mm. And it's, I, I know about gums, so I'm sitting there like, they're the sale ones. Mm-hmm. And it's mad because you're, yes, you you've got the Balenciagas, but if you really wanted a pair, you would not get the lime yeah, green. No, ones. no one on God's green earth is going for lime you unless you saying? play football in your winger. Yeah, and you want lime green so people can see you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not going to go and the do that. The man who buys lime green <clears throat> is the man who has black, white, red, and etc. I was that person as well. I'd mm. get the cell thing. Yeah, I remember Lily White's. Mm. I, I got the, the I got the Nike Lily White's jacket. Yeah, that Nike that Lily White's had on that jacket. I've yeah. never seen it ever. Yeah. Never seen it on the main night website. <laughs> yeah. Never saw it in in in, in night like night town <laughs> Foot Locker, but I saw it there, and that's what I was content yeah. with, innit? And I think I don't. I understand that now we're in a generation where it's like it's a confidence thing, innit? To be mm. able to afford and wear the nice clothes. Yeah. And I, I'm I wouldn't say to anyone that you shouldn't wear that stuff, but mm. when it is forced upon you because everyone else is doing it mm. and you're doing it because you're making yourself lose money or you're not spending money on the right things. Mm. I remember looking at my wardrobe back in the day and it was designer and I had no peace. 100%. And I really wished I could sell, sell those clothes or mm. not make that decision. So I've always learned that just be confident within yourself rather than making the, the clothes make you feel confident. Yeah, yeah. I, I did that when I dressed, dressed 
impeccably to my to my knowledge anyway mm. and no one gave me the what I was looking for so now when I dress I don't dress for anyone else I dress for myself because I feel confident wearing that stuff mm. whether it's a brand whether it's not a brand yeah um, and I think it's a confidence thing I don't blame this generation because we're seeing what social media is right now it's not like mm. what it was back oh, in the yeah, day no, for definitely us, like, because I think every generation is different and mm. influenced by something else like mm. back in the day you'd have a Gucci belt so I think mm, I need mm. to get myself a Gucci belt mm. But I, I, the reason why I mentioned that because that's where it would it would stop. Yeah. Because your funds couldn't. But, but it, it was essentially also that as well. But then it's like cool. Back then we didn't have social media. wasn't so wasn't watching our whole lives like that. Mm. For example, we had MSN, and MSN was a picture that you yeah. could put up and a status. Mm -hmm. That was it. Uh, Facebook came a bit later though. But then Bebo again, one little picture you put up and it's, it's, it's whatever. Mm. Now we're seeing people wake up in the morning and snap, drive what car you drive what you're wearing, who you're with, the food you eat, all mm. of that stuff. So your day-to-day, -day, every single bit of it is being recorded. Yeah. <clears throat> so these people are basically seeing that and thinking, okay, cool. I can't snap my car because I drive a Punto. Mm. Everyone else's will is Mercedes or BMW. Mm -hmm. So I'll wait until I get a BMW, then I'll snap. Yeah. Or I'm not going to show you guys where I live because everyone else has got a plasma in their house and I've got a small TV. So mm. I ain't going to show that stuff. And that's what social media is for these young people. So Yeah, man. Because we live that life now, this is what they think. And I think it's just a, a thing that's going to be continue happening in generations. But I think it's sick when people like ourselves can basically say, yes, this is sick, not going to lie. Love being able to afford all of this stuff, but don't make it the be or end all. And that's why I don't ever promote the stuff that I buy. Like I'll never promote me going to a shopping and say, hey, this is what I bought. Mm. Because that's also it's like red eye. And it's like, nah, I don't want people to follow that blueprint because I can afford it. I don't want you to go and lose yourself for it as well. Mm. So um also you know that like when you whenever you do those things and you're in the moment and you're like mm, no, this is sneaky this isn't mm. this isn't it. Mm, mm, mm. And I've I've never really been in a place where like I've been on my social media and be like raw like man's in selfridges shall mm. I buy this one or buy that one. Mm. And it's it's hard because sometimes when you see it it's just like it's it feels like there's an emptiness mm -hmm. sometimes. Mm -hmm. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like I remember getting my first big check and I wasn't in the best place. So I, I, I was literally going into any shop I could. Mm. Being like, I could buy this. I could buy that. And then you go in there and you're like, this isn't it. I've been waiting my whole life to go into this shop. And no one wants to speak to me. Mm. You're like, nah, man. I'm never coming back here again. And sometimes that's most probably one of the best lessons you could learn. 100%. Because it, it teaches you that no matter how much money you have, they're still going to look at you and judge you for who you are. Same. Yeah, and I man. think I, I realized that where at that time I'd go to New York a lot and New York was the complete opposite. Mm. I'm just wearing shorts and t-shirt. They'd be like, Hey, what's up, dude, man? What's your name, man? Oh, my name's Mo. Cool, man. Well, my name's Jonathan. Can I help you with anything tonight? Mm. Um, no, I'm cool, man. If you need anything, let me know, dude. Mm. Dude, man. <coughs> cool craps, man. What are those? Sean are great. For that. great. Yeah. So already I was just like, Oh wow, this mm. is really different. Mm. I'm really being like, valued as a customer whereas and i i think that's why i i think why i say retail was so important because we've all when you worked in retail you've seen someone especially if you've worked in you know, like like fashion retail you've seen co someone come in with dressed up to the nail mm. and be like how much what for these jeans mm. oh i'm not paying that any discounts mm. You're like, brother, you're wearing Pradas on, man. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. Where you've seen someone else come in now, just normal guy, white t-shirt, pair of jeans, some Converse. Yeah, you're right. Um, Nice to meet you, man. Uh, can I get uh 15 pairs? Always 34 length 32s? Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, bruv. Just mm -hmm. normal. No, mm -hmm. no. That's sick you said that, you know. And and I think that's <clears> one <throat> thing I've always learned about, like, it's it's one of them things. I think we sometimes come from an environment where, we don't grow up with everything. Mm. So the moment we get it, we are very used to giving it all away mm. to having everything. I need the watch. I need the car and rare mm. tear tear. And I was in, I was definitely in that tunnel vision phase. Mm. I must get this watch because mm. this is the bad boy watch to have. You get it and there's nowhere to go mm. because one, I'm not getting my head bus. Mm. <laughs> I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not getting that. <laughs> And two, Shit. there's just nowhere to go. Yeah. I'm just like, I'm not going to wear this watch. Yeah. And what, what, what to the shops? But one thing I've clocked about you, and you do the same thing I do, but even more so, is trainers. So oh, I, yeah, feel, yeah. I feel like 
for example, but that for me is a hobby. It's a, but I've seen yeah, it. Yeah, though. yeah, Because yeah. because your, your Depop is the reason why I'm, I set up my own one. Because oh, I, I, I was getting bare trainers from shoots and mm. stuff that I wasn't wearing. But yeah, the stuff yeah, that yeah. I really love, like I love to collect trainers, isn't it? Mm. Um, so I feel like you see, like when you do it in that way, mm. I'm not telling anyone to how to live their life, mm. but I just feel like when it's a hobby. It's no longer about like your your bleeding your pockets. You actually mm. enjoy the doing this stuff, innit? Hundred percent, man. So like with me, I've started buying clothes again because yeah. I'm starting to feel more, mm. and I want I don't have a stylist. I mm. want to look after myself and whatnot. But during COVID, I was very happy that we wasn't able to go nowhere because mm. I wanted everyone to just realize that we're all the same for one moment. Like yeah. no one can go anywhere. Yeah, everyone's got a, a mad haircut. Mm-hmm. Everyone can't go but and get everyone their nails is in done. the same position. Everyone's Whether you're in the rich same or position. poor, you're stuck in your house. And I do feel like there's gonna be a a mad surgence of people going brazy because we saw it when when shops started opening up again. Yeah, definitely. But everyone's up in there again, and it's like, for me, I just love the fact that I'm able to just not get gassed by that stuff anymore. Mm. Um, I do think it's because I'm quite older yeah. than a lot of people when they first come into this industry. A lot mm. of people come in there very young. You make your mistakes. Yeah. I think I made my, my mistakes outside of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. So when 100%. I'm here, I'm I'm very tunnel vision and. It's it's one of those things. It's just a lesson that I've learned for myself. But mm. yeah, I love how you collect trainers, though. It's inspired me no, to just do, you know do a what madness. It is for me, I used to collect trainers like when I didn't have a lot of money. Mm. It was the one hobby where I was mm. just interested. Right, when does that drop? Okay, mm. they're doing that with this collaboration. Mm. So like back then, it was definitely more of a thing of like you know you you go to the shops and you the shop opens at six a.m. So you, you get that four or five yeah, yeah. to get the crep, and it's mm. like oh, I got it. Sometimes you didn't, mm. but it felt like. Everyone's in it together. Mm. And I think that's what's always... And I, I met I met people through it as well. Mm-hmm. Other sneaker collectors and stuff. They know who they are. But it was also a thing for me. It was like, right, I'm, I was really interested in it. Mm. And just seeing like, okay, cool. They've released that one. And then sometimes there's times where I would get lucky. Like I get the, I got the Galaxy phone posits. Purely mm. luck. Mm. Like I hear in like, oh man, they're going for this much. So that for me was like, oh, I could make a bit of money. Mm. I can be a bit more financially savvy about the way I collect. I was collecting for quantity at one time. Mm. I need the most. Mm. I need all of them. Mm. I need to double up, triple up. That's what I need to do. Well, I was just like, what is the point of having three of the same shoe? Mm. If I'm not even wearing those ones, what to keep them for a rainy day? Mm. And then I think my realization, my, my realization came as when certain shoes are being released, released. And you're like, right, that only came out three years ago. Mm. It's back again. And then you've got the online and you've got the raffles. I, I'm, I was a big fan of the raffles because it gave people who wouldn't normally get a chance a to chance, get a chance. Yeah, yeah. But it's mad when you hear stories of someone who's got people to enter the raffle, like 40 people to mm. enter the raffle. And then that way he can, you know, yes, if you're going to monetize it and build shops, like hustle in it. Everyone's mm. going to hustle mm-hmm. up something in it. Mm. But it's like, mm, it's kind of cheating a little bit. Mm. But I think for me, it's, it's the one hobby. I'm still, I still collect now, but now I'm, I'm really about the quality. Mm. So I'll wait long f- to get a really, like, that's the pair I want. Mm. I need that pair. Yeah. As opposed, you know, I get all these sneaker guys always messaging me, any any crepe you want? I'm like, I can get that. I can get that mm. crepe that everyone needs. But now it's about, this is a quality shoe. When it's mm. summertime, I'm going to drop that shoe. Mm. Because now it feels more, it's like collecting, you know, Pokemon cards or mm. comic mm. books. Mm. You're like, oh, I finally got the one I was looking for. And I think for me, it's made it more fun. Yeah. And I think it's really important for, for me as a hobby, because it keeps me in a place of like, oh, the new Yeezys dropped. Mm. Yeah, that's cool, but I've had Yeezys before. I'm not going to mm. wear them, mm. but I'm really trying to find this old Air Max One pattern. Like, I just stuff got, like that. I just got some Air Max 95s, uh, the old ones, the fluorescent yeah. green ones. And oh, th- yes. Yeah, those are trainers that like- Bad boy crap. I love those, man. And yeah, it's all yeah, trainers yeah. I couldn't get. I, mm. I used to love trainers because- One tens. One tens. Yeah, the yeah, price yeah. alone, my dad would slap me for even asking him. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Then even yeah, with yeah. me saving up for them, I remember when I got my first one, I got the uh, red ones. So yeah. Bro, I wore those so much, yeah, mm. that the sole- It's like I broke through the sole <laughs> yeah. and I could feel the pavement. Like, <laughs> yeah. They were so- When the air bubble squeaks. <laughs> <laughs> in the rain. Like, and and, and yeah. in my flat, yeah- my mum's bit. When you're walking down the pay the, 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 the to get to the to her house, it's those squeaky basketball floors. Yeah, so when yeah, I'm yeah. stepping, I can just say. <laughs> <laughs> but I think now, like when I buy them, it just gives me that that value. Like I was saying to my girl, I was looking, I was like, "You don't understand what this the, trainer the means. Of the you don't understand this. Man. This is a this is successful roadman crap. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hundred percent. White socks, 
tracksuit bottom. Yeah. And so even the white youths, yeah, they used to wear that with a stony top. Mm. Adidas tracksuit bottoms and a night, bro. Come on, man. Yeah, it gives yeah, me yeah. so much memories in it. So I, I just love the fact that like I can go back and buy the trainers that I once could never afford, man. Yeah. It's just rewarded, man. But I think what's really cool is that it's that your creativity that got mm. you to that point. Yes. So how did those videos start when you're doing them in your block? Mm. Like, because I think that's what kind of made it iconic. Yeah. Because I was like, he's in the, he's in his block. Mm. He's not like some guy who's like, I'm gonna go to this area yeah, yeah. and film it. Because also why I find it funny as well because I'm like. That's your block. So I know you filmed that and there's been people that have come down the block <laughs> because when I used to do my couple of cans videos, yeah, when my mum lives, there's a park, in it? Yeah, yeah. And in summertime, the trees, like, like the trees go up mm. so no one could see me. So I'd mm. get the, I'd get the thing on, I've got mm. music playing mm. and I'm ready and I'm, I've got like, I had a tripod at the time. So mm. the tripod would be here mm. and I'm literally like, press play, run, mm. put the curtain on, put mm. the hat on. Mm. Ah, it's lovely. So I, yeah. I messed up. I had to do it again. Oh, bro. It's but, good you brought this up. But man. yeah, there used to be this little gap in, yeah. in the bushes, yeah? yeah? So if you walk past and look up, you would just see me there, innit? Yeah. This is at a time when I done maybe like the first geezer video, innit? Yeah, yeah. It's done, it's all right. It's done. So I'm, I'm doing it. And imagine I'm trying to spit bars as well, innit? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, Julie, get a camel care at the freezer. Mm -hmm. Get it for mm -hmm. Julie and Lisa. Mm -hmm. And I never forget one day, this one guy was walking and he looked up. <laughs> and I was like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and then he's kind of walking. <laughs> and he's looking back up. I see my come back. I was like, huh? <laughs> 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 and then I'm looking in the car like, is he still there? Is he still there? <laughs> and then he went, but so, so talk to me about those that experience of like doing those first early videos for mm. you. Like, it's sick you said that, man, because. Amount of times, yeah, that <laughs> I've heard someone upstairs <laughs> open the door and I'm like, I've gone quiet. Yeah. And because it's an echoey block as yeah, well, yeah. yeah 100%. I know they heard me. Yeah, so yeah. So I'm just yeah. hoping they don't come down and I'm just like, ah. Oh. One time a woman came down, yeah. God bless her because I was like, oh, I'm just performing for my, I got a drama exam and whatever. <laughs> she goes, well, you sound amazing. <laughs> There's me talking about clotting and, and bareback, and she's like, "You sound amazing." I was like, "Yeah, big up you." But um, so so it's essentially what started was I was working at um this job. Yeah, it was like a tech company, mm. and they had like an amazing office in it. One mm. of those offices where there's a dog in there. Oh, okay. You know what type yeah, of yeah, office yeah. there? Yeah, yeah. Every Monday and Wednesday, they they fill up like baby bells and oh yeah yeah it was lit yeah get okay me. times i was broke i said oh, yeah i can count on you lot to, to sort me out mm. so there was these stairs that linked the two the, the it was like a building with bare offices mm. so our building had stairs yeah mm. so one time i just literally just thought no let me just record myself in it um the outfit i was wearing it looked decent i just mm. wanted to record myself put it on instagram then i was like talking about myself and i was like yeah yeah me said trim you see, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I uploaded it on my Snapchat. I didn't put it on Instagram. Yeah. And everyone was laughing. Yeah. Everyone started busting up. Mm. So I said, okay, cool. They like this concept of me basically talking about my, myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me add a little intro to it. Mm. So the intro was me jumping off the banister <laughs> and, and saying, yeah, I'm in the building, <laughs> whatever. That was, my, that was like my, that's the one thing when you first started yeah. those videos, I was like, what's the intro today, bro? Yeah, There was nuts. one where you like popped up. <laughs> you yeah. like, I <laughs> <laughs> see all of that stuff was just like yeah. extinctive. It was like cool. These lot love this concept yeah. of someone coming off a staircase, mm. potentially looking like he's gonna drop, mm. potentially looking like someone's gonna come, and he's giving it to you for a minute. Mm. That's what I had a minute. Mm. So started doing that more at my job. Then I would when I'm not working, I'd be like, oh, I can't go to the stairs because I was working. I, obviously, I lived in Peckham at the time and where I was working was Harlesden. Mm. Can't go to Harlesden to go do a video. Yeah, yeah. So I remember, obviously, my block's got stairs as well. Yeah. So I started doing it at my house as well and that's when yeah. I started doing them frequently. Mm. So I'd whack out like two a day about um, sex or about the relationship or when my friend brought a gun to the club or mm. when this happened or what all the situations you could possibly think of, yeah. And then that's what became the stairs thing. Yeah. Then I started adding outros. I started doing the rock elbow. Mm. I thought I did one year where I was doing, you know, when the rock used to go to one ring, one thing and then drop, <laughs> yeah. I did that. And I think that was one of the most viral. That's when the video started going mad. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, that concept was just so random. It was just me feeling myself, seeing people respond to it. And then I just mm. thought, let me just go with it. But um, some of the bloopers I wish I kept. Yeah. 
because I've had so many bloopers. Mm. Like I'll be sweating buckets. I'm like, oh, I can't get the video, bro. It's not working. <laughs> I call my manager. I'm like, bro, I'm trying. I can't get it out. He's like, chill out. Because my manager talks like he needs to cough. Yeah, like, yeah. chill out. <laughs> go home. Like, go get a drink outside and then come back. Because trust yeah. me, we need this video. Yeah. So I'll wait and then I'll do it. And then it's like, to see that that's the reason why people started to realise who I was. Mm. so beautiful because it was so natural like yeah, you're not going to yeah. see anyone else jump off stairs because mm. you just think the person's mad mm -hmm. do you know what i'm saying and then um the scary part of it is getting caught yeah never been caught yeah apart from when that lady said you sound great but never ever been caught and people think that i've been caught i've never yeah it's just god's just always like don't worry we got you you do your video <laughs> you change your life <laughs> so me. like what, what was the reaction like when you you put these videos up now you're getting mm. this buzz it's getting, you know, I think it's like when it starts getting shared on like GRM or Link Up, mm. I'm just bait. Those platforms, mm. you're like, oh, whoa. It feels mm. like you've made it. No, it definitely feels time, like. You know what's mad, yeah? It's, it feels like you've made it, but you're like, I have to do another one now mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because there's people that like this on this platform. Mm. So, so what was the reaction like when you started doing it, when you're getting that reaction from, you know, celebrities? And exactly like what that? you said. Like, I remember like when all the ticks started following me, yeah, mm. started getting followed from this person. Yeah. Like my old phone, it looks like a flipping, this guy's a neek. He's a yeah. cat for followers, boy. Because I'm just sending my manager, I'm like, oh yeah, my manager just followed me. Yeah. Oh, she just followed me. Even when, so mad, yeah, not just because I'm here. I remember when you messaged me, yeah. Yeah. And you just gave me advice. I think you'd watch my talent hunt, the Peckham one. And you was like, this is refreshing. Just keep going. Mm. I remember I put it on my um, story on my Snapchat and I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, Peckham made... We support each other <laughs> <laughs> on some unity. So I was like, yeah, they could made. Trust me. This me then I put a, a Mo Mo the comedian HP link up soon. Never gonna happen. <laughs> Not gonna happen. Mostly gone. But even then, it was just like cool. It's it's That's changing. When you came to my show that time. No, that was before oh, that. That was before. Okay. That's when we started getting more close. Like, and we started talking more. Um, and then I came with. Uh, I came. I think it was. I think it's the one in Shoreditch you came yeah, to. Yeah, Shoreditch. Yeah. You yeah, did. Yeah, it, yeah, that yeah, was a yeah. great show as well. Um, I remember coming to that, but that was just shortly after that. But then for my followers, mm. that confirmed my theory that I had that one day would link up or it was getting to that stage where I was about to elevate, innit? Mm. But I remember like the reaction was just like, okay, cool. They love this. I've got so much stories to tell these lot. Mm. I can't run out of this stuff. Yeah, And that's yeah. why I didn't. I wasn't able to like fall off because... I've got things that you guys wouldn't even believe has happened. And mm. it's true, it's happened. Mm -hmm. Even when I tell people that I've been on the road, they don't even believe it because yeah. of what I do. Yeah, And it's just like, I can show you stories about that. But what's mad is that there's so much stories I wanted to tell them on the stairs, but mm. my life elevated so quickly that I could, I wasn't able to record stairs videos as much as I wanted to. Mm. And then um, the other day I recorded two and done really well. And it's like, oh, he's back and whatnot. But those those early stages of getting people share your stuff. Mm. I remember I did a video, uh, a Wendy video, where I pretended as if the guy that was with the girl, that was my girlfriend. Mm. It was one of the first videos that Graham Daly ever posted on Instagram that mm. got a million views. Yeah, that was my video, and I was just thinking to myself, mad. Those videos, I remember seeing those videos. Mm -hmm. But not and knowing I didn't it's me. Know who yeah, yeah, it was yeah. Because yeah. I wasn't doing the main face thing because yeah. I was like, Wendy, my, what was it? Yeah, because <laughs> I'm still on the. I'm still like, bro. I've still got people that if they found that I was doing videos would be so surprised. It wasn't the right thing for me to do. I was like, you know, what? let me just do the behind face thing. Yeah, because these videos, I don't know where they're gonna go and whatever, yeah. and they all went viral. So right. when I started re-uploading them after I've, you know, it's Harry Panero, they're like, no way, lad, like it's you. I was shocked that your most iconic video was like, yeah, bro. Well, leave him alone, mate. Don't know him, man. Yeah, actually, he's helping. You're snitching. <laughs> man, I was going to back you as well, yeah. oh, bro. That video's classic. I can't <laughs> that that is, classic. bro, when I found out that was you, yeah, I felt it was like, oh, my, what? No, that's like, bro, you see that video, yeah? That is one of my favorite videos. Online. Like, we, I dropped it in the group the other day about something, mm. but when I found out it was you, mm. it was like, I don't know. It's just like, you know, you see the magician and he shows you his tricks or yeah. something. Yeah. It was like, oh my days. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. He's He's been doing it. Yeah. Yeah. That that's video is classic. I was coming bro. back from uni that day as well. Yeah. I come back from uni. And if you know Riley more than anyone, <laughs> that is, you see, five o'clock oh, on, on any day 
That's the cut through where you could go to the car park, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, that yeah, cut, yeah, 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 you know yeah. the cut through. So yeah. there, I saw it then. I was just like, there was bare, <laughs> and it's mad because there was bare feds there. Yeah. And I just saw him and I was like, leave him, leave him alone. <laughs> and when he said he's reporting something, yeah, my reaction was so genuine. It was yeah, just like, yeah. he's it. snitching, bro. Yeah. And then, bruh. Was, bruh. It, was it, it was it was the thing on Vine, bro. Everyone bruh. was saying, bro. So I just, yeah, it was nuts. <laughs> Am I gonna come and back you? But shout out to I'm just babe, yeah. Because if I was serious back then, who mm. knows what I would have been? But um, he posted that because it went viral. Yeah, and it was just on my my media Instagram. I had like 300 followers. Yeah, mm. but that video done mad numbers. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I'm just babe took it because every all the other pages were taken and were not are not crediting me. Yes, but that used to happen a lot. A lot. Um, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I saw that someone messaged me. I know his name, Mo Jam Comedy. Yeah, shout out oh, to him. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah proper yeah, nice guy. guy yeah, he's a comedy show man. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, so yeah, him, good yeah. Guy. He was like to me, okay, cool, bro. This is how they're going to take your stuff because you're not putting no watermarks on there. You're not mm. letting them know it's your video. Once mm. you put a watermark on there, they can never take your video off yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. They'll have to do a madness and it won't look nice. They won't yes. be able to get the video. Yeah, because some of them have the moving ones as well. Yeah, sometimes. yeah, yeah. So he told me how to do that and mm. I saw how my view started skyrocketing Okay, because of him. I offered him money and he said he doesn't want to take it. Yeah. Because I was like, you actually changed the game for me. You made me aware of something that I was losing out on. Mm. Um. So a lot of people was just like, okay, cool, yeah, like watching the videos, blah, blah, blah. And then from then I was like, you know what, yeah? I'm just gonna keep doing bare videos. Mm. So I just started doing bare, bare, bare different videos. And it just, it's so sick to see that, that concept. I wasn't scared of doing videos again. I wasn't scared to think, oh, I'm gonna get, I'm, there's pressure to do the next one. Mm. I was like, I got this, man. Yeah. I was so confident during that time. Man. Mm. But shout out to Mojay, he's, he's a proper guy, man. If you, nah. if you want that money now, then, um, yeah. He introduced me to the um they, there's this like Somalian like fried rice. Yeah. Have you had it? No. Wow. Oh, I have actually. It's got different colours. Is it I like can't... yellow, white? No, I think that's the I think that's pula rice. I think. Oh. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys. <laughs> but there's this Somalian like fried rice. Mm. Oh my gosh. Bang. Because mm. he 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 done a comedy show mm. in somewhere in West London and he was like, Oh, we've got some food as well before the show and stuff. Mm. I was like, yeah, cool, man. I'll, I'll do the comedy show and stuff. Mm. So he's like, yeah, we got some food, bruv. This rice was banging. Mm. And the maddest thing is, I'm just thinking this is just fried rice, isn't mm -hmm. it? I'm like, this is a bad boy fried rice. Mm. And until I think it might have been Crept or Conan, one of them, mm. someone said, what's better, Jell-Off or rice and peas? And he said in the comments, the Somalian fried rice. And I was like, right, you know, and I was like, oh, it's a thing. Mm. I just thought I just had normal fried mm. rice. Oh, bruv. Think it might have lamb in it or something like that. Bang in. No, their food's beautiful. I shouldn't even, I don't even want to talk about it too tough now because everyone's like, well, I want to try the rice. Allow it, man. <laughs> Allow it, man. So you man are eating the packet tilde, bro. <laughs> you put yeah, in the microwave. Don't, don't get on too much. you got to walk before you can fly, man. <laughs> but um, honestly, man, like Harry, it's so inspiring to like mm. hear your journey mm. because there's parts of your journey which are like, uh, when, when you're saying things, I'm like, mm. raw, like, mm. I feel like we've lived the same life in some mm. aspects. Mm. You know, when you're talking about working in retail and being skin and stuff like that. Like, and it's, and it's not just me, there'll be loads of other people, mm -hmm. you know, who be listening to this, like, right, that, that man, man's been that. But it's so mm -hmm. positive, like the how you've come out the other side of it. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Like with the stuff that you're doing now on YouTube and congratulations on your channel. You got your Thank plaque you, now. Yeah, man. 150,000 followers. 170. 70. Yeah, things yeah are congratulations, things are fast. Yes, I must say. <laughs> yes. But yeah, I was saying earlier before we started, yeah, that for me, yeah, like, was my biggest achievement mm. as Harry Panera. Mm -hmm. Like all the other stuff, they're all uh, achievements that are memories. Mm. But I can visually look at that plaque and say, I achieved that. Um, yeah. I, I did, something I, to hold, isn't it? Something to hold, something to yeah, hang man. up, something that when your mom comes in, oh my God, wow, my son. Mm. You can actually say, that's that's my thing. Um, yeah. And it's, it's sick because I, I got onto YouTube a bit later than when I started doing mm. what I'm doing now. And the love's just been so sick. Um, big thanks to Trunks and Philly as well, because they were the ones that was on me the most. Mm. Get onto YouTube. You're playing yourself. We are, we've got an amazing chemistry here. Let's mm. give it to the people. You see that though, man. It's, 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 it's like you guys are really having a fun time. Yeah, because like, they actually are my brothers. There's a lot of stuff that these lot have done for me mm. that I owe them a madness for. Mm. Like being able to put me onto Pro Direct, Sky Sports, these things are essentially changing my life and my family's life as well. And you guys have said, you know what, let's build something here. Mm. Um, and it's just beautiful to see that it does get transferred into that when people are watching as genuine 
humor and that's mm. what it is we don't plan none of the stuff yeah we love cussing each other just like other brethren do <laughs> do you know what i'm saying and it's just sick to, to be able to do that do you know what i mean it's like you do that face sometimes <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> philly says that all the time it's just like that face you do oh, man. is mad because it's just like it's a face that everybody understands you know like yeah, when yeah, you're looking yeah. at when someone's talking rubbish and you just look at your brain you go you know what that means. That means what's he on about? You know what I'm saying it's it's a face that like it's so mad. Philly, when I first met him, yeah, yeah. and I did that face, he he slapped the hell out of Chunks. He's like, Chunks, he does the face as well. He does it. Yeah. Oh my god, you're gone. You know, Philly's so Philly's uh, reaction will gas you. He, he Philly knows how to make me feel like. I'm the greatest in the world. 100%. He, he does it so well, He's, but he means it. Yeah, yeah, That's one yeah. thing about him. Yeah, like, 100%. If he feels a certain way about you, like, for example, I told him I was coming here because Steve and him was at my house yesterday. I was like, I'm going to go do it. He goes, oh, lovely guy. Oh, love him. Lovely love guy. Mo. Yeah. What a... What Love a guy, that. yeah, he, no, he's that energy type of person. Is mad infectious and, and, and you can see that as well And Trunks is <laughs> one of the most selfless people you ever met. <laughs> meet. Like, he just... Yeah, come, let's go. Let's do that. Do you know yeah. what I like about Trunks is he's throwaway one-liners. Amazing. Are the best. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we was talking about something. Me, him, Dave was all talking about something of football or mm. something. Mm. I can't remember what it was, but Trunks just said something so funny. He's like, what? I fuck that. Fuck that. He said something mad like that. Yeah, his oh, wordplay is nuts. Fuck, fuck like, um, what did he say? Spit on my chest or something. Yeah. Something so mad, yeah. but it was so funny. I could not stop like laughing. He says these little one words that like he would say something like, instead of saying man, he would say the man daisy. <laughs> like, yeah. the man daisy. Or, or like, <laughs> Philly would be like, oh, have some manners and re. Instead of manners and respect, <laughs> yeah. have some manners and re. Like, those little things, yeah, are hilarious. Yes. And, and it catches on and people start speaking like that. And that mm. influence is, is amazing to be part of. Yeah. Um, for example, me calling myself Playboy Clarty. Mm. After that show dropped, I'm just seeing bare people tweet, Playboy Clarty, Playboy yeah, Clarty. Yeah. To the fact when him and Iggy split, they're at in me. And I'm just like, bro, you're not taking this stuff serious, isn't it? Yeah. And it's it's mad that that's the influence that we've got. But it's yeah. a good thing, man. Because it nah, is giving man. a lot of people that inspiration to just be them. Yeah. Do you get me? And it's it's fun to watch, man. It's like, there's a time when me and my girlfriend just watching it. And we're just like, this is actually really funny and mm. fun to watch. Yeah. Because normally I would consume, so we were talking about YouTube actually the, the last, like I watch random stuff on YouTube. Mm. Like what would happen if all the error in the earth was gone? Bruv, I am in this thing. I need to know what happens. Yeah. Because I what, what if the air goes, get my air in it. I need to know what. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what did you just do there? I took bruv, the last bruv. air, bruv. What do you mean? All the air's gone. So what are you going to do? So hold the air and then. Bruv, I'll get a bottle, bruv. <laughs> just be drinking the air. Got the last air, bruv. <laughs> the last oh. air, bruv. <laughs> what are you saying? You want. <laughs> Takes some, takes some, takes. But no, I think like <laughs> it's so infectious to see what like how you you guys chemistry is mm. like on camera. And honestly, man, like it's such a blessing to see like how you've come out of the other side thank you, of man. what you're doing. So um, thank you for joining me. Oh, uh, bro, the podcast. I, I, to be honest, I've been like, meaning to do this. Yeah, no, no, because I, I tried to get you on the but last COVID, one man, and stuff. I didn't no, wanna, I just, do you know what it is? Yeah. yeah, I think sometimes it's like things will happen when they happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm never a person where I'm like, nah, my, my man couldn't do it. Yeah, forget my man. Yeah, no, yeah, no. yeah. It's just like they will happen when it's ha when they happen, mm. and when they do happen, it's it's always the way I imagined it to be. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent. Um, so honestly, man, congratulations with everything that's that's happened and you happening. You too, man. Thanks for being an inspiration as well, man. No, nah, man. Do you know what it is? Like everyone gets inspiration from everywhere, isn't it? So Just take your praise, Mo. No, nah, but you know Please. what it is, yeah. I'm giving Mo his praise. I just want to take it. <laughs> Just hold it, Mo. Okay, I'll take it. Thank I'll you take so it. much. I was gonna, I was gonna do a really nice speech. Yeah, but now I've forgotten my train of thought. Yeah, but thank you, thank you. I appreciate that, cause it's men, men trying to be like you, cause not Spider Man meme. <laughs> you know, you know, young black people, we we can't take praise nah, directly ever, ever. You're big man. You got such a nice smell. You I'll know, be honest with you though, love me, cause. I'm trying to get my smile at you, bro. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, so mad though. I I I like when people do that though. Because I like when I'm in a place yeah, and someone comes up to me and says, hey, you see you? You're yeah. killing it. I'm like, chill out, bro, man. No, I'm just no, that that, that gas is you at the right In my head, still. I'm like, continue. Stop. Why are you stopping? <laughs> I want them to know more. You get me? But <laughs> yeah. it is. You've got to take a pinch of it's, 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 And there's, what it is, it's, it's certain people say it in a certain mm. way. Yeah. So every person has their way that they say it. Mm. But someone has it in a way where it's like, what? Man's way the Balenciagas, yeah? <laughs> Loud. <laughs> and you know, you're like... No, but it's it's the way you say. 
It's not yawn. <laughs> oh my. And you're like, chill out, chill out, relax, chill out. But you know what I don't like is when them people give it to you and take it back. Yeah, yeah. Don't give us though. Raw. Man's got Stone Island, yeah? Swear down, bruv. But they're the blue cut ones, but you're like, fam, why did you just, do that, bro? Hey, just come on, give it now to me. Now I've got to do the yeah. same back to you, innit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Swear down, look at you, though. Got creased up jump, with no iron and that, nah. <laughs> Lam me, bro, Lam me, bro. You know men's broke, innit? I hear that, now I feel bad. Yeah. <laughs> just trust me, I can't have that. No, you're ironless. I yeah. feel bad because you're ironless. But um, what do you have coming up in the future? Is there anything... Any exclusives you want to drop? Yeah, so we um, we got commissioned a show uh, on TV, um, but because of COVID, I mm. don't know when that's going to come out. Congratulations, thank man. Thank you, man. Thank you, thank you. Um, but right now, I'm just really no, just trying no, to- No, 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 no. No, it's cool, it's cool. I know they're not my regions anyway. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know what was a clap in that? Yeah. I was trying to get one of them um, yeah, drink just, chat moments. Yeah, congratulations yeah. for that, man. Yeah, 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 man. yeah congratulations like, for that, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, okay, that, man. now, yeah? All right, Congratulations cool. for that, man. But yeah, um, we're just trying to do, just kill YouTube. Um, we've got a very viral video coming out on Sunday. Sick. We, we linked up with Sidemen. Um, Ooh, with okay. Yeah, so it's going to be a madness. Then Premier League done Sidemen, you know? I, I can't lie to the you. The Sidemen, bro. Those guys are wow. the kings of YouTube. The Sidemen. Sidemen. How are you using that? They might not like the Avengers of YouTube They are the Avengers. <laughs> I just want yeah, one percent of their views, um, <laughs> and then literally, yeah, with me and Philly are gonna start streaming more as well, um, mm. and I'm, we're doing a lot of stuff with the community as well. We really want to do something Sick. that's deeper than just what everyone else has been getting. I want to give people memories that they can, mm. you know, what I'm saying. So okay. um, I'll definitely will be reaching out to you, yeah, man, for some on, man, um, stuff me, man. as well. You know, but yeah, just away. literally just continually working, man. Everything yeah. I'm doing now, continually more. Um, but yeah, just enjoying life, man. Well, further ado, guys, if you enjoyed it, make sure you use the hashtag. I don't know why I said further ado. That did not make sense <laughs> to go in. Further ado is an uncle thing. <laughs> Without further ado, we are going to go to the next segment. Please be ready. Get your cups ready. Further ado. Further ado. I'm not going to lie to you. That is the fobbest word. You've been chilling with a lot of Africans, isn't it? That's the, you know what? Mo's new name now is Further Ado. As Whenever I, I see As soon as I said it, I can feel everyone like, what? Forever, what? What did man say? Big Fair man, allow it, bro. It's not channel four, bro. Allow it. What Further Ado? Um, <laughs> <laughs> and the maddest thing is, I meant to say without Further Ado. I just yeah. said, Further Ado. Further Ado. Um, <laughs> Ferducci. That sounds like Freddie Ado. Remember Freddie Ado? Oh, yeah, Freddie Ado. Freddie Ado. Bad man on what? 05 football manager, I think. Yeah, he, yeah he's yeah, full of Yeah, I would always his... mind. Play bare positions. Fast Left as a wing, right wing, yeah. up front. Yeah, boy. Straight to DC United. But, um... <laughs> 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 so straight to DC United Whoa. and buy him, bruv. Him, Tunchai. Oh, he's, he's a bad boy. Pause. Yeah, yeah. But, um, honestly, man, it's been such a pleasure having you on the yeah, pod. Man. Um... And I just literally, man, your success, I just hope it continues because you're, you're it will very God like willing, positive, but you're, what's really nice, you're, you're a smart guy. You've got your head screwed on. Yeah, man. And I don't want to sound like some youth mentor and stuff, but mm. like, you know where you're going, what you're doing and how to mm. do it. Mm. And I think that's really inspiring for anyone listening. Mm. It's not just a flash in a pan or a fluke or I just done, done it in my, in my, mm. my block and it went mad and, mm -hmm. and then this happened and that. You're very clear of what you want to do. And I think that's really inspiring for just anyone. To Thank hear, you, do you know what I'm saying? So, um, yes, if you did enjoy it, make sure you use the hashtag the Mogadigan podcast. Take care, and yeah, see you on the next episode. Peace. See ya.